Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. My name is Rob Rogel and I work in the Structured Credit Ratings Group at Standard & Poor's. Today we're going to discuss whole business securitizations. And joining me in this discussion are Zi Chen, a director, and John Lampasone, an associate director in our Structured Credit Ratings Group. Welcome, gentlemen. Rob. Rob. So, Z, whole business securitization seems to be quite a niche sector. How big and how active is this asset class? Sure. There are fewer transactions in this sector than your traditional asset classes. This may be because there are only few industries that fit this type of securitization. We've seen transactions mostly in the quick serve restaurant space, including Applebee's, Sonic, Domino's, and Church's Chicken as well as one-off transactions from the alarm security side as well as a yellow page company. The issuers in this sector tend to tap the market a little bit less frequently but at the same time the transaction size are a little bit larger. We currently rate six transactions totaling 4.5 billion in notional. In 2009 and 10 the market for this sector has been relatively quiet but in 2011, we've seen an uptick, both in first-time issuers as well as repeat issuers looking to refinance their existing transactions. From a high level, John, can you explain how S&P analyzes these transactions? Sure, Rob. There are three major components to the analysis. You have the credit and the collateral piece, which most people tend to focus on. You have the legal perspective, and then you have the servicing. All three are very important. From a legal side, we have to ask ourselves, can the assets be isolated? Is rating through a bankruptcy even possible? We'll expect to see a true sale and non-consolidation opinions. If you cannot survive a corporate bankruptcy, you're basically carrying the corporate credit rating of the sponsor. For the servicing piece, there's an important distinction to make. With a typical ABS, in the traditional ABS space, a typical servicer generally collects existing receivables. Here, we're dealing with the pre and post creation of the receivables. So the security alarms company has to continue to sell security alarm contracts. So the yellow page company has to continue to sell yellow page ads. So once they're created, there's a lot more responsibility. And this shows why the continuation of the business is key to our analysis. It also shows the importance of the control party as well as the servicing fee. The servicing fee needs to be adequate enough to attract a third party servicer and we have to be comfortable that one even exists. So then how do you address the corporate credit risk and collateral in these transactions? Well, we have an interdisciplinary approach where our structured team works with our colleagues in corporates. We assess the industry and the business risks and that helps us to evaluate the operational risks. A stable business with low risk generally produces more reliable cash flows which enhances your debt service and allows for longer debt terms. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have good terms with volatile cash flows. Those risks could be mitigated through various structural features. John, you've spoken quite a bit about risks. Can you elaborate a little further on what some of the key risks are and how this is addressed in your analysis? Sure, sure. We review many key characteristics of the businesses. We look at the capital intensity of the business, the supply chain, are they vertically integrated? their labor force, the diversity of the cash flows, any technological risks. These are all, this is all done in conjunction with the business risk profile analysis. So depending on what industry we're working in really is a big factor to determine what kind of dependency we have on the corporate credit rating. The corporate analysts have insight on the respective industry and the strengths and weaknesses of the specific company. So they'll help us to take a closer look at these risks and assess whether or not they're addressed or at least recognized. Now on the cash flow modeling side, we have to take a close look at the data and see how far back does it go, uh, what was the state of the economy at the time because we need to determine how relevant this data is. And then lastly, we look at how complex the servicing is. Is it how unique is it? Is the servicing fee, ad fee adequate? We have to analyze how difficult would it be for someone to take over um, and we have to be comfortable with the fact that a third-party servicer even exists. And Z, do you tend to see that most of the exposure in these transactions is solely to U.S. operations or does there also tend to be some non-U.S. exposure as well? Sure. 
Uh, for transactions that we rate out of U.S., most of the cash flows are dominated by cash flows within the U.S. There are a couple of transactions, however, where a portion of the store counts and therefore revenues come from abroad. For those transactions, it's important to note that while the growth rate has been higher abroad, it's also important to keep in mind that there is potential for additional risk associated with foreign exchange fluctuations. And who do you tend to see as some of the key participants that are unique to whole business securitizations? Well, in recent transactions, we've seen different parties, including a backup manager or servicer, who is usually a firm with expertise in both business operations and cost optimization. And they may be called upon to the extent that the existing management or servicer is in financial or operational stress. In many instances, we've also seen a control party function, which typically has the ability to make decisions on behalf of the note holders. In some transactions, we've also seen controlling class representatives, which are elected by the note holder. The controlling class representatives typically have the ability to accept or reject recommendations that are presented to them by the control party. Other times, we've also seen liquidity providers, whom usually advance on interest shortfalls, but only to the extent that they deem it's recoverable. Now, we don't necessarily see all of these different functions in every single transaction, but there's usually a combination of these functions that we've seen in the transactions we've recently rated. Okay, thank you, Z, and thank you, John, for that overview of whole business securitizations. And thank you for tuning in to this segment of Credit Matters TV.